Hi gorgeous seekers, welcome to the summer q and I'm so excited that you came to spend some time and hang out with me. This is what these videos are really about. It's a, it, We do get into deeper concepts and as we get deeper into this video we're going to talk more and more about philosophy and meditation and things to take with you and the collective energy and what we're going to be what we've just dealt, dealt with in April and May and how that's influencing June so this is a great video for that but it's also just a chance to hang out with me um, and learn a little bit more about me and about my process and also about what I use and the products I use because it's that time of year um, every quarter I get my FabFitFun box I am a FabFitFun partner and so this is my chance to hang out with you guys and talk to you about the products I'm using and the rituals that I've been using and what I'm getting in my summer box because uh, I partner with them. You guys also get a benefit if you've been interested in trying one of these subscription boxes. It, you, it's seasonal, so you get four a year. But um, each box is normally $49.99, so if you guys are interested after I've talked through some of the things that I have in here, um, you get $10 off with my code TAROT. So uh, if that's something you're interested in, feel free to hop on over there and you can do that. Um, these boxes are somewhat customizable. I got to pick a couple of the ingredients and then you get surprised by other things that are in there. And it's also available in the UK now, so for those of you who are watching UK, FabFitFun is now available to you guys as well. But um, there are some favorites in this box. Like this one, I am definitely jamming on uh, as far as beauty products. It was definitely up my alley, the things that came. Like everything in it, I think, is something that I have been using and I've been playing with for the last couple of weeks. My favorite thing is this Generation Clay ultraviolet brightening purple mask. It's really soothing. So a lot of times clay masks are a little bit drying, a little bit uh, in, uh, intense, and that's good sometimes. But this one's a little bit gentler. The way it dries on skin, the way that it washes off, I don't feel like I've just put my skin through something really harsh. Uh, and it has like this really hippie smell. I don't know what it is, but that always works for me. <laughs> and it's very soothing. And uh, for a clay mask, it's got a lot of soothing ingredients so I've been really loving this. The other thing that I'm loving is this Grace and Stella Spray All Day Rose Spray. This one has aloe in it and of course rose um, and it's a hydrating spray um, that you can just with the nice thing with rose spritzers like this is that you can kind of just spritz it on. I don't even just use it on my face. A lot of times I'll use it like on my chest and shoulders throughout the day. I live in Arizona which I live in the high desert which is really dry. Um, it's super like the hydration game is just basically all day every day so anything like this so and I love this um, and I like that this one has aloe in it I'm a, kind of a purist when it comes to rose sprays actually I normally just like the pure rose e extract and the water and that just being it that's in this one this one has a few more ingredients in it but it, like I said this is a great one for more all over like I put it on my face but like I like to use this one on my body when I'm feeling a little bit dehydrated and so that's kind of a nice option um, especially in the summer months when our skin does get exposed to the dry and everything I'm really big on reapplying things throughout the day to feel pampered I am a Leo you guys I mean I'm like low-key extra as we've all established here <laughs> um, so okay yeah, I think I've been using everything in this box this month. Uh, this setting spray, this makeup setting spray, is pretty nice. It's got SPF 30, and it's water resistant, I believe. Water and sweat resistant. So you have to reapply this, but if you're somebody who likes a setting spray, this is alcohol-based, which a lot of setting sprays are. So it's a little bit drying, but it's a great alternative if you are not wanting to smear on a lot of sunscreen or if you've forgotten like I've used this this is where this uh, it's by Kula um, I forgot to put sunscreen on or sun protection and then I got a last minute invite to go out and be out in the sun outside somewhere and I just spritzed this on and threw it in my purse so that was kind of a cool effect though I am not personally a huge fan of makeup setting sprays because they are so drying I tend to use these only on specific days or when I'm needing a little extra boost so just a heads up you know if you're looking into that and that's that's what I love about these boxes though because a lot of these products you know are $20-$30 um, if you just buy them 
on the on their on the company's website or uh, in the store and this way you get to try it out and if it's something that you like you can use it like infrequently and the other thing that's nice about this coolio or coola coolio who am I today <laughs> is it's vegan it's cruelty free um, and it's in a really nice glass box bottle which is really cool these days with plastic culture and all of that okay my other favorite there's a couple more favorites in this box and then I'll kind of show you what else is in here but this exfoliating foot mask is so nice I am a bit of a forest outdoors girl this is by wish and it's an overnight mask um, paraben free sulfate free phthalate three free and cruelty free so it's really nice um, and I'm somebody who I wear sandals out I'm out in the dirt and the forest a lot I go hiking my feet in the summer <laughs> need help so like this is really cool because you put it on at night and you just sleep with it on um, and then you're supposed to rinse your feet like eight or twelve hours after you put it on but it just it helps your skin slough off naturally and nicely so I've been really enjoying that and I think this one smells really soothing too. It's very s subtle scent, which I am a huge fan of. I've been playing with these little hair ties. I have a lot of hair and I'm always playing with different ways to keep it back. <laughs> and they've been really fun. So it's just like a fun little thing. One of the things I got to customize was this lotus towel. I want to see if I can like show you what it is. It's a beach towel, but it's in this lotus flower shape. It's so pretty and so soft and it was one of the things I got to choose for mine and I am planning on being out by the water this summer and so I'm very excited to use that let my little <laughs> free-spirited soul shine through <laughs> with my towel choice by the water um, I, and the, it just keeps going you see how long I've been talking about this box and there's still more there's a styling nourishing cream which is really nice I also have really dry hair so I like to put something like this in my on the tips of my hair also smells really nice this is by living proof nourishing styling cream and then we got I got a piece of jewelry which you know that pink loons my girl I'm always wearing pink loon but every once in a while it's really fun and it's so cute it's a little uh, star pendant so just something different to wear by Jennifer Zuner and finally you guys Finally, after this whole conversation, we also have these beautiful 111 Skin Rose Gold Brightening Masks. These are really soothing. Um, just a nice serum-based mask. You know you know what to expect with this kind of mask. Uh, you get your little serum, you put it on your face. This one is nice because it's one of those more, the gummier texture of face masks. So I find those a lot easier to use. I have such an expressive face if I use the the papery masks that they have they're just flopping all over the place I have to basically go sit by myself in the quiet if I use one of those but with these flexible ones I'm able to be as expressive as I am and it actually holds on so those have been really nice so yes I have my pampering ingredients for the rest of summer that is for sure so once again if you guys are interested in ten dollars off a summer subscription box Use code TARO over at FabFitFun and you get that $10 off. And I am so loving what they gave me. They are so sweet. Wow, that's really loud. The editors there have been really helpful and they always help me figure out what, um, what I need in my life. I do love to pamper myself. Uh, any given day, I'm going to take some time out for myself to... Ooh, to pamper and to take care of myself uh, in those deeper ways. So um, anyway, that was a lot longer than I planned on it being, but we got to talk about some important things today, don't we? So I know that May was pretty intense for a lot of people. It was a very, sh like a lot of things shifted in and out. A lot of things phased in and out very quickly. It was almost like riding the crest of a wave. Um, and and having it come down and then once you've ridden it kind of seeing how you're in a new honestly it's a it's a it's a catchy phrase that's been going around but jumping into a new timeline it's a really a new time and space that we are in now and I think a lot of people felt that and for some of you it was about starting new relationships for some of you it was about closing out old relationships um, and we were all working with what we had at hand in different ways 
I had a really beautiful and very healing May, but it definitely involved me having very vulnerable conversations and facing up to any place in my life where I had tried to be avoidant or put things on the back burner and just let them uh, figure, get figured out without me showing up fully. And this month was, this last month in May was definitely a time where it was time to show up fully and it was time to have those deep conversations and really discuss, uh, what I need to discuss with the important people in my life. So let's get into the Q and A because with that kind of in mind, I think this Q and A will be helpful for anyone looking for some soothing advice for June, some soothing conversation for this time of year. So <laughs> we'll start with the lighter questions first, and I think we'll get progressively deeper. Uh, somebody asked, pancakes or waffles? And I love waffles. I am a waffle freak. Uh, and yeah, that's, I mean, I love pancakes too, but waffles just light me up. Uh, they're so good. And uh, okay. <laughs> What do I love about my Virgo moon? I like this question a lot because I've had to make peace with my Virgo moon. I used to, I used to kind of um, put it in the back burner because I love I love being fiery, being my Leo sign, sad rising self. I like that those aspects of myself, and I always really embraced that, like the more forward, driven, outgoing, exuberant sun and rising sign energies of those fire signs. And then my Virgo moon, I just always perceived it as <laughs> my neurotic, uptight, easily stressed outside. But the thing is that my Virgo moon keeps me really grounded. Right? It, it helps me show up to the details in my life. It helps me to, with the sun and Jupiter ruled stuff going on in my life, and the fact that Neptune's in my first house, like, I have all this expansive energy that's very dominant for me. So having, like, that mercurial internal world pull me back and just say, hey, how can you check in with yourself and do what you need to do in this moment? As Glennon Doyle says, what's the next right thing? My Virgo moon very much helps me do that. My Virgo moon also helps me run my business, stay on top of things, show up on time to appointments. And I've just learned to work with it. I used to kind of just be like, oh, like, why do I need to have that done? Why do I need to go there? Like, now I just realize, you know, if you have a Virgo moon and you're somebody out there who's struggling with having that need to have things put in order and put right. Uh, the, the thing with the Virgo moon is that you're going to get a, a lot of emotional sustenance from putting things away, you know, kind of your little inner Marie Kondo coming out. So like a lot of times those are the things we kind of want to avoid, but if you just go ahead and you write those few emails or you put those few clothes away, it can really help your soul relax. And that's one of the things I've realized. It's in the little details. It's in the little rituals. So if you have a Virgo moon, you're going to need to check in with your little rituals throughout the day. And that is just something that you will have to learn to embrace about that. It's something you're going to have to connect in with because it's always going to be calling to you for attention and I mean, we all need our little rituals. We all need to check in with ourselves. But if you have a Virgo moon, it tends to ping at you in a different way. Uh, <laughs> okay, a lot of people want to know my journey. And I did bring this up in the spring Q&A with my journey with being an empath and being a card reader and being um, tuned in. But I'll talk about it again because it's fun. Um, I've always been like a super highly sensitive person as much as I try to pretend that I'm not and that I can just go, go, go. I've had to repeatedly make peace with the fact that I, I'm just very sensitive. I've always had been able to see things and had a lot of visitors <laughs> come visit me just throughout my time. Um, very highly connected, very busy in my dreamscape. So like, this is just something I was just kind of born this way. It's always been in my life. Um, I've always been really sensitive. And like I said, it's been a really big journey throughout my life to honor that instead of fighting against it. Like my Virgo moon, I think my high sensitivity is something that I constantly have to remember is a very real part of my life and that I have to live my life honoring that. So with tarot card reading and with the work that I do in the world, that developed really natural for me from my early teenage years on. I inherited my mom's tarot deck from the 70s, which I still use in videos often, um, and it just continued to develop throughout my life. 
I went off to do other things. I've worked a lot of different jobs. I've lived many lives, um, and I'm a very curious person that likes to get my hand in a lot of different careers and life paths, but my calling to express and to write and to connect with people and to do this type of work is something that came into my life in the last few years as the prominent, most prominent part of my world. It was something that could not be ignored anymore or just put on that side burner where I was doing it with people close to me and in my community. It was something that needed to be a part of my bigger world, once again, honoring that intuitive sensitivity that I live with day to day. Rather than fighting against it, I had to learn to embrace it. And that was another question. It came up in a variety of ways in the Q&A on Instagram, but everybody was asking, like, how do you, how how do you be a sensitive person? How do you live life this way? Because we all have deep sensitivity. We are born to be sensitive, sensing beings. We are energy beings. So everybody has a certain level of sensitivity. Um, and some of us just have, it's a little bit more, it's more of a challenge to work with in this world. And the thing that I would say about it is stop fighting the fact that you're sensitive. Stop uh, you know, you don't need to feel shame or guilt about it. You don't have to put it in a box as either good or bad. And I think a lot of times highly sensitive people judge themselves for not being able to keep up, maybe not being able to stay out as late or not being able to handle as much uh, physical and a mental input. You know, for me, I can go and have a lot of fun and be at concerts and be at shows and dancing around and be very extroverted. But I hit a point where I've had enough energetic input or from having a more sensitive day where I can feel everybody's field, I have to go. And all my friends are very supportive of this. It's good to surround yourself with people who are really loving and supportive. Um, I just have to learn to honor that and take care of that. And I think when we feel shame about it or we feel like we're judging ourselves because we should be able to do all this stuff, that's where the real pain comes in. The pain doesn't really come in when we just know that that's something like we are working on extra registers. We're getting extra information all the time. And our energetic systems, just literally our nervous systems, but also our vibrational field needs time to incorporate all of that information. So if you are somebody who's kind of struggling with that and how to fit it into your life, it's definitely something you have to keep checking in with, figuring out what's working for you in your routine, what's working for you in your living spaces, and notice where it's where it's hitting at you or where it's bothering you. I mean, I would even suggest keeping just a separate journal and write in it when you feel a little bit overwhelmed and see where there's common patterns or where you're noticing that you're getting hit with uh, that feeling of fatigue or overwhelm. And you can kind of start to see where you can make some practical shifts to help you and to honor and to nurture and to mother that sensitive part of yourself because that sensitive part of yourself is giving you a lot of information. Normally, it's going to be giving you the tools and the information you need to live the life you want to live, but we need to make space to honor it so that we can hear it and not feel that it's just an inconvenience, right? So it's, it's a work in progress. I forget all the time. I have to go back <laughs> and recheck in with that sensitivity. I was just at a festival on Saturday and I was having an amazing time with my friends and about five hours in, I just had this huge wave of like deep exhaustion. It was, I was so tired suddenly. Um, I just been like dancing and laughing and it was just a nice day. Nothing crazy was happening. Um, and it was almost like it felt like sadness. It wasn't sadness though. It was just me having overwhelm. And so I like sat down on the grass with my friend and just was like, I think I'm feeling like a little overstimulated. She's like, yes, you should go home. And so I did. And I felt so good. It was so great to be out, but it was also great to find that dividing line between when I need to rest and when it's okay to be out. So let's see what other questions we have. There's so many. Oh, okay. So a lot of people wanted to know what happened with a lot. For those of you who follow me on Instagram, a few weeks ago, I was asking a question about following up with a friendship and like checking in or just letting it fall away um, as relationships change. I ended up checking in and uh, just writing to this person and, you know, taking responsibility for me not checking in sooner and hoping that they were doing well. And we had a really nice exchange. We were definitely in different places in our lives. And uh, that was really, really clear, but it was very peaceful. And I think it helped us both feel that there wasn't this blockage, you know, this, this like haunting thing in the background of both of our lives that we had never addressed. It's like, we're not going to need to spend all our time together right now in life, but 
I am really a big fan of being honest and authentic if you have something, you know, bubbling up in you because a few years from now, you never know when those people will cycle back through and isn't it worth it to have some peace and understanding um, so that that isn't looming there when the natural cycle of things comes through. So for me, I'm just an expressive person also. This is another thing I'm learning about myself that I'm embracing, which is I am somebody who just... I need to just let people know where I'm at. And I think that's a much healthier approach. I mean, one of the things, I think this is a shadow side of law of attraction thinking is this whole like, let it go, let it flow. I totally am into that. I love a good flow. I love a good relaxing thing. However, the flow can also be about being in vulnerable conversations. The flow can also be about taking a perceived risk in something, right? And I think also we can utilize this concept of the flow as a way to avoid taking actions where we know we really need to at a soul level. Not just unnecessary conversations and things like that, but I think there's a, an avoidant quality sometimes to the way that we can use that concept of flow and I think in my case I was using it in that way rather than showing up to the conversations that I needed to show up to so I definitely learned a lot from that and felt feel so much peace and so grateful to that friend and to our friendship and to our evolution a really helpful thing so for those of you that were curious yes I'm all about communication and I think in a healthy way it can it's the best thing in the world um, how do you get out of the vortex when you fall out? That's a great question. Obviously, a lot of you I know out there are Abraham Hicks fans, so the vortex is an Abraham Hicks uh, concept, the way they describe it. So if you're interested in that, just Google that and you can listen to them. But it's that whole idea of getting into alignment, feeling like you're in alignment, feeling like you're in receptive mode, and that you're connected to divine source is basically you know, where we live our happiest lives, right, is when we check in and we're able to get back into that alignment. But we fall out. I mean, I think most of us fall out every day, even if it's just for a couple of minutes when we get frustrated in traffic or when we have to get out of bed in the morning, what have you. Um, I may not be the quickest early riser. I'm working on it. But how do you get back into alignment? The first thing is to not judge it. I think the first thing we want to do when we're trying to be really good in our spiritual practice and in in our lives for ourselves is we want to be really strict with ourselves. We want to say, I want to be in alignment 24-7. Okay, that's awesome. But, it, you know, immediately if we fall out of it, we start judging it. We start putting categories on it like, this is stressing me out. Well, that's bad. That's really bad. I better stop doing that. And as soon as we do that, we actually start to amplify the feeling of it. So it's that whole third party observational energy that really helps us understand when we're in alignment, when we're out. It's a non judgmental thing. There's not really a good or a bad with this. So if you fall out of alignment because you're running late in the day, let's say, you know, our often our initial instinct is to put it in a category and say, this is really bad. This is going to ruin everything. I'm a failure because I'm not in this amazing mood while I'm trying to run doing 10 different chores today. Um, and you want to put all that on there and say, okay, well, this is, this is bad. This is not good. Like I need to stop this now. So you have to kind of just pull back for a second. You know, oh, I'm feeling things. I'm feeling some frustration. I'm feeling some sadness. I'm feeling some overwhelm. Okay. I'm feeling that. So that's step one, right? It's just, just to third party acknowledge that you're feeling that. And then to just take some deep breaths. I know that sounds really, everybody's always talking about breathing, but truly just taking like those four count breaths. You breathe into, you breathe fully into your belly. You breathe like a two year old. You breathe fully into your back. You count in for four you count out for four, do that about 10 times. And just let your mind clear out. And then the next thing to do is find the next point of joy for you. It can be something as simple as just sitting in the sun for two minutes. It can be as simple as sending a text to your best friend. It can be thinking about that amazing spring roll that you're going to eat at dinner. Um, it can be anything like that. Just going and looking at some nature, go and look at some plants, smell some flowers, uh, anything like that. 
Another way to do that is to go general and to think about one of your favorite fantasies that you enjoy. That's just fun to play with, just fun to think about on the broad spectrum of things, and just tap into that and go there and let yourself enjoy that. So those are some of the strategies I use for um, getting back into my vortex, but really, truly, honestly, the thing that has revolutionized my life, is it's not the visualization practices, it's not the looking for the next point of joy, it really has been in the non-judgmental state of witnessing my own emotional reactions to things. It's definitely an interesting practice. And when you start it, you're like, how is this helping me? You know, but as you get better and better at it, what happens is because you don't continue to amplify the feeling, it just comes and goes. And it doesn't end up distracting you from the rest of your day. And often, you know, when you're not judging it, you do realize there's information in there that you're needing. And it can be something very small. So that's, that's really the key point is the non-judgment. Um, because normally if we're feeling pain, if we're feeling hurt, we're feeling we're out of the vortex. That's like our inner child speaking. That's our inner like childish soul needing to be heard. And if we just shame it and shove it down, it just causes more separation, which is where that feeling of being separated from source and being out of alignment starts to get really strong. And so if we can be kind in those moments where we've fallen out and realize we're still just as worthy just because we're not in the vortex, who cares? Be out of the vortex. Go poke around. See what's out there. It's fine. It will be totally fine if you're out of it. So a lot of people also like to ask me about the difference between intuition and ego. Um, and like the, the most common answer that people have out there in the world is that your soul works from love, your fear works from ego, or your ego works from fear. Um, and yes, I think there's a difference. It, it's the way that I like to think about it is your ego, when your ego is trying to make decisions, it feels like there's not enough time, there's not enough resources, there's no way it's going to work out, right? So you start wanting to take actions, sending that text, sending that email, trying to to work against this like racing clock. And it's a very physical feeling. A lot of times you'll feel a little wired. If you're, if you're in like a mode where you're not sure if you need to take an action or not, and you can't tell if it's ego or soul based that's calling you forward and you're feeling kind of wired and you're feeling that lack of spaciousness. You're feeling like there's not enough. You're feeling that hunger for results. You're feeling that hunger for answers. That's normally your ego talking because your ego is convinced there's not enough. You know, your ego is competitive. I mean, that's part of how we get things done in the world, right? It's not just an evil tool. However, your ego is very competitive. It's very prone to looking for for the way to get over something, right? So it thinks of in terms of scarcity. So you feel a little claustrophobic in the availability of good things. Now your soul works a little differently. When your soul speaking to you, it's much more out of curiosity. It's much more out of the sense of, huh, What's that about? Hmm. And a lot of times, too, there's an effortlessness in, in the soul voice. Um, like, my favorite thing to think about this with, and the best place to apply it, is the way that we write messages, especially with technology these days. You can really parse out the difference between ego and soul when you're using technology to communicate, because... Soul voice, when you're writing up an email or a text that's important, that has to do with an important decision, soul voice comes out really easily. You know, you ask for what you want, you're very direct, and it, it doesn't feel like you're trying to get a result from another person or another situation. You just know where you're at. Ego voice tends to be a little bit more passive aggressive, a little bit more like, these are what I need, but I need you to be this. And there's a difference there. And so you start to learn the difference between that feeling of spaciousness, of ease, of flow through, and that feeling of crampedness and feeling like you're, you're stuck in something. Um, okay, let me see what other questions. People like to ask me what my favorite cards are. Oh man, this is, it's so interesting because it changes all the time. I think every season of my life and like every season of the year, I have different ones that I'm really jiving with and really loving on. Um, I have really been digging the hermit card recently. Speaking of my Virgo moon, um, that whole idea of that deep 
wis wisdom. I turn into a bit of a wild girl in the summer. I go out into the woods a lot. I spend a lot of time stargazing and being very much in that hermit mode in the sense of not being alone or isolated, but being very connected in and tapped into the bigger messages. I actually have a much easier time feeling connected to my path uh, this time of year. So I'm really into the Hermit card right now. <laughs> uh, but I'm always into the transformational cards. Uh, and so that includes Eight of Cups. It includes Six of Swords. I know that those are, <laughs> they can be associated with pain and loss. But for me, that when you make peace with the points in your life where things shift, where pieces are moving through, that's when you really are in joy. And I've been learning how to do this uh, more and more and more as the years go by. And I'm really getting to the sweet spot where I understand it. I've been starting to understand the way that the world is this breathing organism. And when you are really um, just listening and paying attention and being a part of the witness uh, of that, you can actually see the living, breathing organism of the way that we come in and out of each other's lives. It's very much... Um, this moving morphing field and the more you tap into that the more beautiful it becomes so i really love those points of energy where you get to interact with the morphing field itself and so i've gotten to be really into that of course i'm still a leo so i like when things stay i like when things last for a little longer i like when things are a little bit more stable but i've had to learn with life that you know things have their season so I've been really into that recently. And once again, I find it so much easier to be in this headspace when it's warm out and I'm feeling less of that tension in my body from being cold all the time. So maybe I'm having an easier time with it right now. And let's see here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I really wanted to uh, address. Mostly I just want to close out, I think, with just a little discussion about June, moving forward here in July and the summer months, we're about to hit into eclipse season next month. And the the platform in the world has changed quite a bit just in a couple of months. And like I said, May was very revolutionary. It was a very big time of shift and change. And I think one of the things to keep in mind is just what I was talking about with this morphing field. That's really where we need to be now is understanding the living, breathing organism of us all moving together. And you'll be noticing more and more. And the more you're in alignment and the more that you are listening to your soul, this is one thing I will tell you, and for those of you who have been feeling that may brought you to that closer point, the efficiency with which things that aren't working for you leave your life and the efficiency with it which things arrive is very quick. And it can sometimes be a little overwhelming to suddenly realize that in being in alignment and being in the flow that that things will, with even a, within a day, can go from being one set of criteria to another um, in very subtle little ways. And I think just be prepared. We're still in Gemini season when this video comes out. It's very mutable energy. It's very changing energy. And then even with Cancer, we're having eclipse season happen in Cancer. We're having a Mercury retrograde in Cancer during Cancer season. Um, there's a lot of immutable emotional energy. And if there is one point in the year this coming up over the next couple of months that you're going to want to be a really gentle, loving witness to your emotional state is going to be right now. And for those of you who are able to tap into that sense of being able to witness and love your emotional states as they come through, you will find that these are amazing, beautiful months. However, if you're in resistance to those emotional states and you don't want that, you just want to be having fun, you just want to be one thing or another and just put it in a box, you're going to find that you're feeling really frustrated. You may even feel kind of stuck and repeating a cycle. It's okay because you're going to be learning. But if you're starting to feel stuck, it's normally because you're not listening to something inside of yourself. These couple months are a really great time to uh, not distract yourself too much. I mean, just go have fun. Be healthy in your distractions, but try not to d numb yourself out. Try not to dampen yourself down. That's always going to be my advice. Life improves so much when we're not trying to numb ourselves, when we're not trying to dim our lights, which we often do because it's scary to feel all the things. But this is a time when if you are willing to go there and be there and be present with it, the way that the world changes with you is so beautiful and it will hold you and carry you forward. So keep that in mind, my loves. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and sitting with me while I just 
talked and shared and exchanged ideas with you guys. And like I said, if you're interested in the FabFitFun, you can head over to their website. You get that $10 off your first box with code Sarah or with code Taro, just Taro. Information is in the description box if you follow that over. I love you guys so much. I will see you so soon for another Moon Magic, for July readings, for the power of the months ahead. Thanks, guys.